So sometimes people reach out with things that I really have no experience in and I'll just right away say, usually empathize with them. Usually like if they're reaching out to somebody that they really don't know in person and um, usually it's because even though they know me, it's st there is still an anonymity mm -hmm. and maybe they're shy or they have nobody to talk to and it's usually coming from a very broken place. Welcome back to another episode of Inspiration for the Nation. And I don't know if you're keeping up. We're putting out two a week for the three weeks. And this week, we have the one, the only, Peas, Love, and Carrots. That's not a real name. And you can see how I don't even know how to say her name properly. By the end, I actually figured it out. On this week's episode, um, I had my wife, Gita, Elephant Langer, Gita Langer, co-host with me. Such a good fit for this episode. She always has been telling me since I first started doing podcasts, I think like the second week, she's like, you got to have Danielle Renoff on. She's someone that is just going through her life as a mother, as a daughter, as a Jewish person, and she's just so authentic about it. There's obviously what to talk to her about her Instagram account and all the food that she does. She's just someone that's very relatable. And once you hear the episode and if you, you follow along, there's something so authentic about who she is and how she lives her life that's really inspiring. This episode is in memory of Shimon David Ben Yaakov Shleima, Miriam Sarah Bas Yaakov Moshe, as well as uh, for Rufu Shleima for Gavriel Yeshua Ben Nechama Chana. If you could daven for, for, for this person to have uh, Rufu Shlema or for the Neshamas. I, I said that um, they should have an aliyah. Here is my conversation with my wife and peace, love, and carrots. We can all use some inspiration to help us overcome the obstacles we encounter in our lives. Get ready for thrilling conversations about struggle and triumph with those in pursuit of making a positive impact in this world. I'm Yaakov Langer, and you're listening to Inspiration for the Nation. <laughs> All the way from Eretz Yisrael. Where in Eretz Yisrael do you live? Rishayim, Rechavia. Okay, the, the heart of it. Did you think that you'd be living in Eretz Yisrael when you were younger? One second. We're just starting? Yeah, yeah. I was like about to oh, say, I'm like, we're okay. going? Like, this is happening? I just died right in. <laughs> okay. <That's> a, <laughs> like, like you, you did warn us. Right. I said you I'm going to do an intro. Yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah. people, okay. people, I think, people don't want to hear like, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I so thought, good. I, that is Thanks where so I thought you were going to start. Why not? Like, how like, is your flight in? Yeah, exactly. How is it doing okay. in America? Sure. <laughs> so, maybe we should take over. <laughs> I know. Hold on. We'll, we'll start <laughs> over. I got this. It's really, we'll start over. Um, bring, if you could, Wait, bring the mic a lot closer. That we're going to start over. Oh, should we keep this in? <laughs> All right, you go home. Watch the kids. Yeah, we we'll call you when it's finished. I, you know, I think okay? maybe just you two should do it. <laughs> I feel like we could get a really good conversation. We probably out of this, could. Though. I know. I, I think know. you could. Okay. Uh, okay. I I think I'll keep that in. So. Okay. So this is okay. I'll I'll start off. Okay. This is the first time that that my wife, who's been so supportive of me and my podcast for so long, she's she's the person behind all of it. She she watches Alexander and just lets me escape for way too long. And she's co-hosting this episode with mm -hmm. Mrs. Peas Love and Carrots. I have you in my phone at, like that. I like that, Danielle. Mrs. Peas Love and Carrots. <laughs> I'm not even sure. I think I know your last name, but I'm not even sure what your name is. But do people... What? Well, that's really not I good. I just jumped right in again? Since we're no. Here. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> no, no. no I, I, Daniela Renoff. No. Danielle? No? Yes. Thank you, Gita. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I, 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 well, I shouldn't know your first I name. I mean, I'm a superman. What am I supposed to say? Like, and this is Peas Love and Carrots. Okay, so first of all, how's your plane ride? <laughs> Actually, it was amazing. Okay. It was amazing because my husband came in the day before. He came in with my boys. And then last minute, he ended up taking my two little girls. And then he also took all of our luggage. <laughs> and then I came with my three big girls because they had to wait one more day for their two adult um, uh, school report cards. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the last day of school, and you get you get your report cards, so they didn't want to miss that day, of course. Um, so we flew like me, the three big girls, no luggage. Oh, that's amazing! To check in. The dream. Yeah, it was a dream. <laughs> and then we got here, and my mother had unpacked everything. 
Oh, so oh. everything was set up for you? Yeah, yeah, right yeah. When you came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gorgeous. Like, I, it was really, that was the perfect question. It was the best flight ever. Oh my it was gosh. amazing. I'd be scared <laughs> if it was a bad flight. So, so Baruch Hashem, it was a good flight. How was your husband's flight? <laughs> his was fine. The truth is, no, his was really fine. Um, the two big boys and the two little girls is the easiest situation, you okay. know, because they're pretty helpful. And so that was fine, but it's not easy, you know. Like anytime you bring a small child on a plane, there's many, many difficulties. Mm-hmm. Especially a flight for that, that, that yeah. long. But they were like, I think his flight was as good as it can be, and I was very, very appreciative and very expressive of my appreciation. So that hopefully he'll, you know, feel very positively reinforced. Do you, <laughs> do, you, do you feel that like okay, maybe at this point is slowed down a little, but like your life is a lot of back and forth between Israel and America. Mine is not. Okay. My husband's is for sure. I'm saying he is back and forth multiple times a month between Israel and America, Israel and Europe, different places. So there definitely is a lot of traveling, but I think any time any person picks up and leaves their family to go to a different state, a different country, whether it's whether you're Jewish or not Jewish or anywhere, um, if at all possible, whenever there's an opportunity to go back and forth, you probably take it because um, because it's hard. It's hard to pick up and leave your family. Obviously, it's not always possible. There's definitely been times where we've gone years, I've gone years without coming back to New York at all. Um, Just different like things going on in Israel, things happening, or maybe our parents kept coming and it just wasn't could I to go um but COVID yeah <laughs> corona yeah you yeah. know I actually got really lucky ish I could say both my brothers got married during corona and both of them got married during times where there was no flight restrictions oh wow it was mamish and ace I mean it was pretty crazy getting there because like our flights kept getting canceled and rescheduled, canceled, rescheduled. But we made it to both weddings, so that was good. So wow, we actually got to see my parents. Um, I think we went into lockdown right in March, and my brother got married in October. So okay. wow, okay, yeah, it wasn't right, so bad. Right, it was like past that crazy. Like I always think of the exactly. curve. Like that's how mm-hmm. I think of like the past couple years, like in curves. <laughs> it's true, and then. My parents actually came because we made a bar mitzvah, so they came and they got stuck there, so that was amazing. Oh, lovely. Um, <laughs> okay, so so far, good flights, good experience yeah. during Corona. So Baruch far, things Hashem. you're off to a good start. Yeah. I have a million questions, but I want Gita to start a question. Okay. Gita, we have, Peas Love and Carrots here. What, what do you want to ask <laughs> okay. her? How she started? I don't know. First, we should talk about like the name, Peas Love and Carrots. Who came up with it? I love it. It's so creative. It's Thank right you. I have no good story for it. Oh. I know. It's Thank so, you everyone for it's listening. So that's the end of the podcast. It was a great time. for the better flight. Sometimes, first question is a flop. Sometimes that's... No, your first question was awesome. It's me. I'm the weak link. I don't have an answer. Um, I just... When I created the Instagram account, um, it was really the middle of the night. When was this? Six years ago. Okay. My... Maggie. Was that was a very exact answer. You're like six years ago and seven days and 13 no, hours. No, it's, it's really seconds. closer to like six and a half years ago. Oh my gosh. Like, I think it started in December, like a, a week or two before Hanukkah, I think. And my, not my, Maggie was, however old she was, I don't know, she was born in Nissan, so it was Kislev, whatever. Okay. Um, she... I, I don't know. I was like very, very bored. She was little. She was very little. She was like, what, a month old? Uh, two months old? No, two? no, at Denise Santa. Like nine months old. Okay, that was Were you a social old. media like person? Were you on Facebook no, before? No, I didn't even have Facebook. Okay. You weren't a social media person. I did not have Facebook. I did not have anything. Were you anti social media? No, 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 no. 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 I just like didn't, didn't really have exposure. Mm-hmm. And two months before I got it, or three months maybe, I had met someone in. Um, the Citadel, who put Instagram on my phone and like was like, oh, you have to follow me, and I followed her. So that person really gets the credit for Peace, Love, and Carrots. Yes. <laughs> okay. And I basically started following her, but also all of these random like Gaius chefs that I really liked, that I found these Jewish chefs, and I, I thought it was so cool and so in- entertaining, and mm-hmm. beyond that, like it was just posts of food, and really at that point, it was really much more inspirational. There was like a, a lot less garbage on it. Um, and it was more like 
the people who you followed was what you saw in your right. feed. Yes. And all you were seeing was pictures and people writing things about food. And I loved food always. And um, when Maggie was around that age, I was just like really in a rut. My husband was traveling back and forth. I'm not a down type of person. And I wasn't like sad all the time or anything. I just was like really dreading making dinner every night. And for me, that was a big deal. Oh, because I want to I- talk about that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, because it's real. Oh, it's totally real. For sure. And because and and for me, it was so confusing because the kitchen is really a place I love. Like I when my kids were young and they used to go to sleep at like six, seven o'clock, the good old days. Yeah. I, Never in our lives. <laughs> we're not there yet. I would, we I'm here yes. one day. I <laughs> would go to the kitchen and I would cook and I would make Parsha cakes and crazy dinners. And yeah, like I, I really loved it. Uh, prepare lunches and snacks and do things and bake cookies for their lunches. Like I, I really just not, I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed being in the kitchen and I really wasn't enjoying it. And... I didn't know why. And then I was seeing all these really creative um, people. Creators. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) on Instagram that were creating delicious food. And I would have ideas. And then I would, like, sort of get back into the kitchen. Then one day, Ellie was traveling. And it's always, like, a little bit hard to sleep when he's not around. Because, okay, especially, like, the nights he's flying are really actually, like, quite difficult to sleep. Um, cause I'm like waiting. You're nervous? No. Like- well, first he takes off very late at night usually. So it's like 1am. So I'm like okay. waiting for that like final, okay, taking off text. And then because you're like so and like anticipating that text, then you have to like, you know, wind down you're before really you can fall so asleep. Into those texts. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So we're like, we landed. We're like, it's 2022. You don't have to tell My us My family's like, oh, we oh. landed a week ago. Like, Ellie, we're here, by the way. <laughs> Ellie always says that. He's like, if I don't land, you'll know. <laughs> the text right. comes in. I'm like, oh, oh my that text God. is so important. Yes. But no, the right. taking off is good to know because then if he doesn't call for a few hours, okay, so I know his flight's delayed or whatever. I don't know. Um, Then it takes me time to wind down and then it's already really late. Fine, whatever. So I was up in the middle of the night and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to start an Instagram account. So I already had had an account, Danielle Renov. That's my name, by the way. Okay, yeah. (laughs) I'm I'm Danielle Renov. I have no clue who she is. I'm like ready for the food post. She's she's much less interesting. Much less interesting. And um, I... Okay, so to make a second account on Instagram at that time, like, I didn't know anything about social media. I should have just started posting food on Zinyal Renov. Like, I already had friends there. I already had things going on, but I didn't. I, like, started from fresh. Yeah, I I, I started from fresh, but in those days, you had to have an email associated with the Instagram account. Maybe it's like that now. I haven't made an account since Peace, Love, and Cares. (laughs) But you had to, to make a second account, you had to have a second email. Okay, so the simple thing to do would have been to go into Gmail and just choose a name at gmail.com and then make that my Instagram name. But I didn't do that. Mm. I don't know what happened. I went on GoDaddy. I spent, I think I'm probably their best customer of all time. You bought okay? a domain? I bought a domain name. <laughs> I what? bought 15 domain names, I think. Oh Ellie, I, I get like phone calls from Ellie the, like, the <laughs> next day. He's like, what did you do? <laughs> like, Wait, I don't know. How did you get from creating Instagram account to I don't domain? Know. I because I needed an email. So then I'm not, I don't, I, I literally don't know. You I wanted don't like know. an email of like at peasloveandcarrots.com type of thing? I don't know. I literally okay. don't know what happened. But <laughs> then I'm like looking for domain names and I keep typing things in and nothing's working. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I'm just like, oh, Peace Loving Carrots. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's literally perfect. It's literally perfect. Okay, I love it. It feels so me. It resonated. And I like put it in and I'm like, I literally was like, C-A-R-R-O-T-S. Please, Hashem, please, Hashem, please, Hashem. And I like pressed enter and it worked. And I was like, okay, this is amazing. And then I just went on Instagram and that was it. And I started posting food. I like how you're like, it's not an interesting story. You literally it bought is- half of the internet <laughs> to get the name Peace Love and Cats. I don't know why you put the domain for it. She's probably no. sitting on like gold in domains. Right. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 100%. No, I'm like peace, love, and carrots, dot edu, peace, love, and carrots, dot org. <laughs> Can you just com, get an edu? Dot like, il, dot doc. Sorry, they're, wow. all, they're all taken. Wow. Don't okay. try. Impressive. Okay, so okay. then, and and your mission was to post supper? Like, what? Dinners. But what's no, your mission? not dinners, just to post pictures of food. And then, I guess because I had the domain name, I, like, for the first few pictures, I kept writing website coming soon. And mm. one of my friends texted me, and she's like, Danielle? 
I don't want to see another picture. If you don't post the recipe under the picture, don't post the picture. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fair enough. That's super annoying, right? Yeah. And But back then, nobody posted pic- recipes on Instagram because most of them had websites and like did this normally. Right. You this is like the infancy yeah, of like food nobody, bloggers. Right. Nobody. Right. So I was just like, all right, I'll post the recipe. And that's not a big deal. And then I started posting. And I guess because like Baruch Hashem, you know, I had uh, little kids and have to make dinner every night it just yeah. was very easy and like I wasn't so mock bit about the pictures because I didn't even know that was a thing so like I literally just put it on a plate on the table and I would take a picture and, and I would post the recipe and yeah you're like, eh. like there was no lighting <laughs> there was no anything but I am pretty creative and artistic and like okay so slowly my pictures got better things got better um and I just loved it and it like literally rejuvenated my entire relationship with the kitchen and it was exactly what I needed. I needed to be more creative. I needed, I'm really, really an extrovert. I really like to talk to people. I really like to connect to people. Mm-hmm. And I really needed a way to do that. And it was so amazing for me. And to this day, like it's never gotten boring. It's never gotten wow. dull. I m- and it's really grew it. into like the most amazing empire almost. It's crazy. It, it just never was a goal. Like my goal, I guess, was just... To share to and to connect. Yeah. yeah. To have an outlet for my creativity, to share it in like hopefully a way that people would appreciate, mm-hmm. but if not, not. And to connect. It's so beautiful when things grow organically like yeah. that. And you can kind of look back at your whole journey. It was really... Yeah. It was really amazing. What's crazy is the fact that you're opening that school now, so you have peace, love, and carrots that eat you. <laughs> so it really works out. But um, it, it's interesting. What what would you say for, for women, and, and Gita, maybe you could speak on this. Um, not to throw you on the bus. Is this interview on me? No, no, no. But we're, we're mentioning this idea <laughs> that, that I know that, that this, this happens to you, and I think it happens to any regular person that when you're just, you keep on making breakfast or lunch or supper, as much as you could love food, it's so easy for it, pun intended, to get stale. For sure. And and what advice, other than starting an Instagram account, would you give to people who are like, uh, well, why am I keeping doing this? Like, it's uh, I'd rather do something more, in quotes, important right. than make like, food for my family. For me, like, I, I love to cook. I really do. I don't want to cook every single day at 5 o'clock. Like, right. it's just, it's people who love to paint, they don't want to paint every single day at four o'clock. Or For three sure. O'clock. Like, it's just. I feel like that also, though, still. I love what I do. I love that it's, a, like, I'm able to have this creative outlet, but it doesn't necessarily solve always the problem of, oh, I still have to put dinner on the table at five, six o'clock. What am I going to do? Um, so I think there's a few things happening. First of all, I think some people won't ever like it. And it's okay. Yeah. Like, we all have to do things we don't like, right? Like, I really, really, really hate changing sheets on beds. I push it, hate it. I, like, I would rather do any other job in my house than that. I don't know what it is. It's I think it's like walking back and forth <laughs> to the corners. It's terrible. No, because when you get one side, then the other side flips over. It and never like, works. And then it never stays. It's so bed. annoying. Yeah. It's yeah. I don't know why. And I think because in my head I decided I hate it, I, like, <sighs> can't get over it. Right. And I really, I you really know, they have like a new invention. I don't know exactly what it is, but like, is this is it disposable? Oh, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> it's like these zipper on sheets or something. No, I don't want those. I don't want to zipper it. I don't want to. Be, you don't I don't want to go in here. You want to sleep on a bed of hay and just call it a day. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, I what are we talking sleep about? On a perfectly fluffy, amazing, firm but fluffy, <laughs> but like bouncy mattress <laughs> with like really cloudy, soft sheets in a perfectly made bed that somebody, somebody else did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's doable. Um, and I want those sheets changed regularly by somebody else. That is not me. Right. However, that is not the reality. So I do have to do that, right? You could we- barter with your neighbor. You're like, I'll make you supper. <laughs> you do the sheets. Oh, I'm sure they'll get on that, right? But you're like, okay, you're making for your family. You'll just add on another whatever it is. For- <laughs> so... Okay, maybe that's, that's <laughs> good. That's, that if, if, if all the men were staying home, I feel like that's probably how it would work. Oh my God, 100%. Um, but, you know, it, part of it is just some women really, really don't like cooking. So for them, they have to find a way to make it work. So for me, that means everybody's sheets get changed on the same day. Like the same hour, they get done, boom. That means I also have to have enough sheets, enough pillowcases, enough whatever in my house that because it can't all fit into the laundry at the same time. Like it's still going to take me two days to do all that laundry because our washing machines are super tiny, right? So, um, so that means I have to have enough sheets to change them all over at the same time. So fine, like that is how I worked it out for myself. Um, 
you you have to do it in a way that works for you. If you really hate being in the kitchen, so take one Sunday a month, make all of your schnitzel, okay? Stick it in the freezer. Do I want to eat schnitzel that was defrosted? Not really, but like if you don't like cooking, you probably don't care so much about the food either. And or maybe you do, but Oh, some people love eating and It's don't true. Like it's true, but I think if you really really hate cooking and hate being in the kitchen, I mean, okay, I, I give it to you. They like food. But okay, right. you have you have to pick something, right? Right. So like so something's got to go, right? Like that that's life. So Maybe not. Maybe it's just like a bad example. Like if you love your fluffy beds, then you gotta make the beds. Exactly. Right. Like maybe meatballs, right? Because those can defrost pretty, pretty, pretty well. well. Yeah. Make a lot of meatballs. So once a week, you have meatballs for dinner. Then a different Sunday a month, make a lot of soup, whatever, a Freezer vegetable soup, space, something like such that. An issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you have to find yeah. something that works for you. So. If you hate cooking, then get yourself out of the kitchen. Find a way to limit the amounts of time that you're in the kitchen. Um, if you don't hate the kitchen and you don't hate cooking, you just find it very tedious. So also, you can find ways to make it less tedious. First of all, make easier recipes. Okay, if you can, buy already marinated chicken and just put it on a grill pan. Um, buy pre-cut lettuce if you can or not, you know, or um, make have grilled cheese night one night like put all the cheese on a plate put all the breads on a plate put all the spreads buy all the spreads that's so creative the way your mind is working to make like a grilled cheese charcuterie board like no and let your kids come and make their own and make it fun and you're not really the one so involved or make something in the morning so that it's not five o'clock at night right make something that you can put in the crock pot the night before and let it go all day or in the morning put meatballs in your crock pot or put meat in your crock pot or put a soup in your crock pot or um bread your schnitzel and I by the way do that I very often make dinners in the mornings Mm -hmm. first of all because I want to (laughs) work like it's like part of my work so I want to do that in the morning before my kids come home but also my house is like a revolving door girls in our store come home very very early and my boys come home very very late and my dinners have to be very specific like it has to either be something that I can like grill a few pieces of chicken at a time so that they're all eating like fresh grilled chicken because yum are you always in the kitchen yeah but I do think that most mothers at a certain point are always Always in the the kitchen. kitchen No, not at all. I think your mother probably is too. Yeah, at this point, hundred percent. We will be right back to this week's episode, but first, let me tell you about another incredible podcast called The Good Faith Effort with Reb Ari Lam. And I want to read you the show notes on a few of the episodes, and and you'll 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 see. Okay, this one is with Drew Johnson, Hebrew and, and Greek. Okay, human equality, justice for all, political library liberty. Hope in the face of the spirit. We take all of these for granted as essential components of a good life and virtuous society. But where do they come from? Where will you find them in Plato and Aristotle, in Cicero and or Platonus? Okay, I don't know how to say the Greek names. What if we can't? On this week's episode of Ari sat down with Drew Johnson, professor of biblical studies and director of the Center of Hebraic Thought and King's College to talk about why the world we live in is incomprehensible without the Hebrew Bible fascinating. They talked what's wrong with the Greek philosophers, what the Hebraic world is all about, what ritual can teach us, why it's important to fold your underwear, interesting, what punk rock has to do with the Bible, whether our body is something we should try to escape, the greatest biblical story you've never heard of, and much more. I don't know who writes these show notes for them, but I need them to write my show notes. It's incredible. It makes, whenever I read through their show notes, I'm like, I I don't know how they could come up with such really unique and brilliant ideas. Let's go to another one. Jonathan Sarna, Lincoln and the Bible. The emperors of Rome traditionally promoted themselves as deities, as human beings who has had ascended to godhood by virtue of their political might. In America, of course, we do not have god kings, nor do we defy the great leaders of our past. But if there are, were any political figures in American history about whom it could be said that he had achieved some sort of genuine transcendence beyond the usual political acclaim, it would be Abraham Lincoln. So what made Lincoln great? Where was his flaws and triumphs? What does the success of Lincoln presidency tell us about the American story at large? How in particular did his unusual embrace of the American Jewish community make sense within the wider context of the American experiment? It's so good. And then he has with Rabbi Scott Khan. What is Orthodox Judaism and why should you care? These are the episodes that you will hear on it, folks. It's really taking this idea of like, I am a Jew and Hashem gave the Torah and then there's this world. 
we know Hashem looked into the Torah to create the world. So now, how could I take what I know from the Torah and apply it to the world? So obviously, you know, you learn halacha and you could say, okay, I cannot uh, do this X, Y, and Z in business because look at the Torah. But when you have ideas, whether it's, you know, a political leader or just talking about how organic chemistry work, where does that fit within the Torah's lens? And that's kind of what this podcast does. It's so much more than that. I can't really tell you more than just check it out. We had Rabari literally on this show last week uh, during the ad to discuss it, but go check out the Good Faith Effort podcast. It's in the show notes. If you enjoy this podcast, you will definitely enjoy. They're very unique. You will definitely find episodes that you'll be like, wow, this really makes me think uh, Rivari does a great job and I'm so happy to support them and tell you to go check them out. And now back to our conversation with peas, love, and carrots. When my mother built yeah. her house, she wanted her kitchen to be like the focal point of the house. It already like, was the focal it already point. Was the she focal just point. wanted it to but be she more would, comfortable. She would put, <laughs> yeah. she would so put couches in the kitchen if she could. Yes, She's that's like, true. that is where that we is hang my out. Dream. I, want, yeah. I want couches like near the table, not too close, but not far. It's such a beautiful thing. On the table because everybody's in the kitchen because that's where she, your mother is. Right. And kids want to be near their it's mother. It's the heart of the home. And you don't want to kick your kids out of the kitchen. Right. So you want the kitchen to be accommodating to also your needs. A hundred percent. So... I think it's just how it is because, you know, the little kids eat earlier. And then as you start entering this like world where you have different age range of children and your night doesn't end at five o'clock or six o'clock or seven o'clock, your night's ending at 11 o'clock and some kids are coming home and eating dinner at 1030 at night. Like you and really kids get picky. They will want yeah, you, you're never leaving the kitchen. right? <laughs> <laughs> so you also need to be strategic about the food you make, right? Because I, like personally, I don't think it's fair for my little girls to eat fresh chicken at five o'clock and then the boys to eat five hour old chicken that's been reheated four times at 1030. I'll take your chicken five <laughs> hours reheated <laughs> any day. <laughs> but I want them to be excited to come home. I want them right. to look forward to coming home to a really yummy dinner, um, you know, and I want that to be delicious and yum for them. Are, are your, I'm interrupting, are your kids like, are their um, expectations like really high based on like oh what God, you're yeah. saying? Saying, like, houses need to like um, step it up. I don't. Yeah, it depends on the kid. Oh, okay. It depends on the kid. No, like it sounds like the yummy, and delicious, and unique dinner. I, is that I like? No, they're not always unique. There, a lot of times, I would say once a week, my kids eat grilled chicken, Israeli salad, and couscous or rice. Like people see that on Instagram. That's mm-hmm. very straightforward. Yeah. That is one of my kids' favorite dinners. Sometimes I'll serve it with pizza and trina. Sometimes I won't. Sometimes I'll serve it with like a lettuce salad with dressing or not or whatever. But that is like a staple dinner once a week. If things are really crazy, that could be twice a week for sure. Um, and it's just that like the the chicken is grilled fresh kilo to order, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't like I don't know if you like gate like gave him a piece of grilled chicken that you like <laughs> reheated in the oven <laughs> for like four hours like this he, is making me look so bad like, <laughs> what do you mean Wait, keep I feel that. like you thought all, we I'm don't like, have to tell the world for Alexander five hours ago <laughs> I'm like oh there's some leftovers let me eat that <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if they're I, I don't know I just I don't care yeah I, I don't that. care I, I just want, want I want them to come home and I want them to feel loved and for me mm. giving food there's so little you could give big kids, right? Like, they don't need anything from me. Right. They oh, can go yeah. and find everything on their own. Like, you were teenagers. Like, the only thing you really need from your parents is like, to be loved. Nourishment. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice yeah. that you're saying the food is, is your form of giving them love. Yeah, but it is something that I can give them if I give them what they want. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, if if he comes home and he doesn't want the grilled chicken, I I really will make him something else. That's sweet. So Um, I I started doing podcasts like a while ago and Gita kept on saying, you you have to have... Daniela Renoff. I'm like, oh, Gita, Danielle. Danielle. Oh, my name God. is Danielle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're gonna have I was setting up a joke. You guys <laughs> totally like jumped in there. I know your name. I was, okay, whatever. Oh, you were making a joke. He yes. was making a joke. Okay. Do you have the, hold on. You guys ever got the joke? Okay. Oh, listeners. Okay. okay. <laughs> Either way, for peace, love, and carrots.edu, you have to have her on the show. <laughs> Taking it back. Um, and, and, and I was always like, okay, I don't, I'm not as, you know, ensconced in the, the, the definitely the Instagram world and the food, and I definitely don't really follow w- women influencers. And there's always something that Keita's like, no, I just love how 
she's just not she's not just a, a food blogger she's like bringing in this aspect that like being a mom and being happy about what and she's spiritual. doing and bringing love and aspect. bring spirituality into it and and yeah. I'm just gonna bring up this point that like I once random I, I went with Rabiumtov Glazer to like his Rebbe it was like five in the morning I don't, I don't remember much about it but one of the things he said I think uh, yeah, I, I don't know if he's Hasidish and he said on during the week the mitzvah is when you're having food is making the bracha and when it comes to Shabbos the mitzvah is is more so the onig the, the in actually enjoying the food so there's definitely this like at least in the Torah in the world this idea of like food is there to really connect us to Hashem in a certain way. I think everything is here to connect us to Hashem in, in any way. Mm -hmm. So I for sure agree. I do think food is, it's a taiva, right? So um, I think it's not the end all be all. And I think that's really, really important for people to remember, especially now, like, right, it's Tamas and we're coming up to the nine days. Like, it's not a time for your fanciest dairy meals. It's just not. Right, right. Um, for your nine days menus. Yeah, it's not a time for nine days menus. It's not a time to be dafka, maybe making siyums, just to be able to eat something or, you know, party in a way. Like, it is a very serious time. And during that time, food does take a backseat because, you know, because it, it's not the ultimate pleasure, right? It maybe is a vehicle towards pleasure that really we can get other ways. So food is obviously very important to me. It's, I, I love food, I love to eat, <laughs> I enjoy it, but I do always try to remind myself that it's just, it's not what it's all about, you know? Um, it's there, a, like There are so many like steps like to actually getting to your to your made food already and I feel like you you know you outline that like in your posts very often you know you go to the shuck you pick it uh, up you speak to the vendors you're right you know and all of those like steps are so I I, I that's why I connect so much to your Thank page you. um I just feel like you're bringing the life into the food like you're not just showing like you know Thank a dish you. like you're showing all the steps everything you're showing your children in the kitchen um you know everything that goes into it and like the life of it you know you're showing the life of it which, yeah, I appreciate that it's very so, much. It fe it's very natural to me because it's not separate, you know? Like, right. it's all it's all a part of the story, right? Like, how the food ends up on your plate. I happen to be very, um, this is always very surprising, but, like, I really do care a lot about the environment. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hello. Yo, don't get me started. <laughs> Stop. I, I have is... to, like, be on team anti-environment. I love the environment, what? but Kita... <laughs> Doesn't she like one day? She's like, we're not doing plastic. I anymore. was treasurer of the environmentalist club at Queens College. We were, oh wow! We okay. were. We I had don't a have dis any plastic. disposable. <laughs> hey, what's no the disposable. thing? No, no, no. What, what's the thing? The what? compost thingy. Oh, oh my god! Compost. I, used to compost. I have. I yeah. Have, yeah, yeah. 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 made me stop because he's like, Giza, the moldy apples is just not working for me. So no. In okay, in your shalayim, you, there's a phone number you can actually call, and they'll bring you a composting bin outside your house, I and tried. they'll even come and collect it. So I tried to get our building to get a compost bin. But they never responded to me. It's, it, it's Stage. So when I moved though to this building, I, I couldn't do it here. I was right. I am really sad, but I do love it, and I also right, use very limited disposable. But we interrupted. You're saying you're into the yeah. environment. No, yeah. I care a lot about where the food comes from. I care a lot about the the farmers that are growing it, how it's grown, because ultimately I do think that Hashem gave us this amazing world and these amazing resources, and I do think that when you know you eat something, to not appreciate okay, we should appreciate the nourishment it's providing us, but it is providing so much more to the world beyond just nourishing our bodies. It's providing Parnassa for millions of people. It's providing a clean environment. It's literally when you're eating plants and vegetables and things that grow on trees, you're also, Hashem is providing clean air. He's providing a way for us to have oxygen, to breathe. And I do make my kids listen <laughs> I, to I a lot of information is, about that. I think this is so beautiful. Like, I I think that one of the biggest shames... I mean, I'm in the food industry also. Like, I, I, I'm in school now. I'm becoming a food scientist. Cool. So, like, I feel so strongly about this topic. Um, people don't know where their food comes from anymore. Right. They don't. They think it comes from a package in a supermarket. And it's such a shame. And, you know, I, I would... I think it's amazing when people connect to the earth more, when they, you know, they buy ingredients instead of, 
You know, we're, sure. we're an ingredients home. We buy ingredients as I, opposed I think, to, So I even you know, think there's made. a place for both, though. For sure, Like, for I'm sure. also, it happens to be, like, not a huge fan of processed ingredients just because I'm super controlling with my food. Mm-hmm. And I really like to, like, you know, I like to make sure it's the right amounts of salt, the right amounts of sweetness. The right, and when you buy just a bottled sauce, you can't really control that as much. So that is my main reason for, you know, preferring natural ingredients. But I for sure think that life is really, really busy. And yeah. being a woman is really, really hard. And if dinner on the table is easier for you because you can open a jar of duck sauce and pour it in your chicken and stick it in the oven, good. Hashem put that in this world for that purpose also. Because if you put that tray in the oven and then you sit on the floor and you play cards with your kids and you build train tracks and you build magnet tiles, you literally you elevated the duck sauce a hundred percent. Your duck sauce is just as good as my <laughs> chopping onions I, I, and garlic I'm and doing all that. Balancing this is this is yak one hundred percent. No, I agree with that. Tell, tell me this all yeah, the time. Yeah, I mean, because Gita honest truly feels bad when she's doing something. She's like, "Is this the best thing for the environment? Or just the best thing that I could be doing?" And I and I say this idea that like you want to try to be as good as you can but there's sometimes if if this is if this situation is going to get you frustrated because you have to start from scratch maybe take the easier way out don't always but then that way we could all be you know just it's more calm and just easier yeah so i think it's i i think it's really hard i like i i understand i also feel can feel very guilty sometimes and i really also my husband has to like bring me back a lot because I can feel really guilty um, but I think the main thing is just to do the best I can do and I really try not to think about it on a global level you know oh, like yeah. the whole world is gonna like oh, do you feel that pressure do you feel that pressure are melting. totally <laughs> totally you know what? I, I like I think about it when I use a plastic fork but I do what I can like you know if I have to send food to somebody I'll send them in a tin I send it in a Tupperware I just don't use the Tupperwares to store my own food. I have a million jars that are taking up too much cabinet space in my very small kitchen. Hundred <laughs> percent. Wait, wait. Do you wash out pickle jars? Um, and then like use well, them? we don't. Our pickle jars are cans. Right. True. So no. Okay. <laughs> she got lucky Tomato, on that one. Mar- no, you have little containers for marinara sauce, right? You guys have those. Little, um, like, we have. And you're making no, your own our, marinara sauce. Our sauces anyways, are so. also are also in cans, but. Like baby food jars, like I, yeah. I use those for like probably a few weeks. You fit like my half a cup of barley eating. in there. Like, what are, you <laughs> in there? are you kidding? I keep all of those. I love those. They're what? so good for spices. But you have to, you know, oh, you have to like tovel them after you of course, wash them. But then I, I love them. Yeah. Yeah, they're and so you, good. You guys don't have to put your eggs in the fridge. That's like a major. Oh yeah, yeah that's a really I, big deal. Could you confirm this? Because you do not have to put eggs in the fridge in our cell. But here they're already refrigerated. You buy them refrigerated. Right. We don't buy ours refrigerated. Right. They're not in the It's fridge. such a, it's way easier. Like you have these massive stacks. Yeah. I, I think it's hilarious that Americans really zone in on the eggs. <laughs> yeah, because our fridge is like full. All oh, Americans are like, what? You have so much space in we your fridge. We can get They're to like, the bags and milk us, thing. Our fridges oh, are a quarter credit. of the size of your fridge. That is true. That is true. <laughs> okay. At least we don't have to eat the eggs. In there. <laughs> there is a That's store. Fair. There was a store. Dedicated to eggs. Oh yeah. Mamla Yeah. There's, there's, yeah. there's it was a few. Open. There's a few of those. Yeah. It's a oh, chain really? now. It's a chain? No, no. There's... But there are a few egg stores. Yeah. Okay. yeah it's very interesting. How? <laughs> I don't know. It didn't. The model. It was on like Shmuel and Navi. They're only open for a month. I, like I went in there. Like, I, uh, I was so excited about it. I thought it was a cool concept. It was a but it was something. more expensive than like <laughs> right. the Macola down the block. I'm like, I don't know the business model there. We actually get eggs delivered. I know, but I, it's my pr- my, my Rebbe's wife, uh, my Rebbe's Reb Noach Victor. So his wife is a caterer, and she also like it's when you're dealing with food and you're making a lot yeah, of food that makes sense. And yeah, it's a great service. Most we, pe- yeah, you you get chicken delivered also, or oh, we got okay. Or that so you pack? most people, uh, well, okay. So it has changed a lot. We moved 15 years ago. There was no Ushrad, There was no Sharavacha. No Rami Levy. There was no wow. big supermarket. There was only very small random supermarkets there was cheaper coal like all the way in Hernov and then mostly we went shopping in the shuk and you bought different things from different vendors and chicken we bought in Geula and then he moved to Beit Jamesh and then actually he became like super good at delivery and he delivers every Tuesday to Shalayim and he's amazing and he delivers chicken every Tuesday so but now you could get fresh chicken in Osher Ad or Sharavacha I don't know what day they put it on the shelves so I always am like I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, cautious. Um, but 
Um, I always order from Benny's. Shout out to Benny's in Beit Shemesh. Um, they really are the best. Their chicken is so beautiful. I should totally it's get them really as a sponsor nice. of this episode. And oh my gosh, what a nice shout out. His skirt steak is so much better Did than... his skirt steak in Israel? No, no. His skirt steak is significantly better than any skirt steak in America. Oh I gosh. don't know why. I like, it's bl- I beautiful. I wrote off meat when we were living in Israel. Yeah, a like, lot of people do. We, but brought, we did the suitcases of meat. In yeah, because there is stricter so, laws. Well, if you're buying Israeli meat, then it is mostly grass-fed. Which is maybe healthier. less tasty, but it's healthier, right? No, or, it's, it's not less tasty. It's no? just a different taste. Okay. It has like a little bit of an earthier taste. Like it's a little bit beefier in mm. a way. Um, but sometimes the cooking like can vary. The cooking techniques can change a little bit. Um, it is healthier for you. But the main thing is that the way they butcher the cow in Israel is different. So the cuts of meat ends up being different. But Benny actually gets like really good cuts of meat. And you can tell him what you want in English. No numbers because I can't stand the number system. I will never help people with that because every supermarket has different numbers, different things. I just like can't even get involved. And he's awesome. So he should sponsor this podcast. <laughs> do, do you feel a pressure to because I guess you're your life is very on display. And, oh, I was, and, ask, I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah, go for it. Ask it. No, no but you started. No, no okay. go for it. Um, no, I, I wanted to, you know, ask you about um, what the pressure of putting your life on display. Does it ever get to you? Do you have times where you're like, we're shutting out the phone now, we're putting it away? Um, like, how do you balance that? Like, how do you balance technology in the home, basically? So, first of all, most afternoons. I'm pretty unresponsive to people. Um, I don't like lock my phone in a drawer. It just like goes on silent and that's it. Like if my husband needs to call me or a friend needs to call me or something, okay, they get through to me. But other than that, I just I don't know. I don't I don't I don't feel that personally I have such a struggle with that. Um I just there's so much going on. The time flies in the afternoon from like 1.15 until 11 at night. I don't even know how I get there. <laughs> it's like literally like a marathon every day. I barely speak to my mother from those times. Like she'll call me, like, I, I can't talk. Like I'm sorry, like somebody is screaming in the background. Right. I just can't talk. Right. Um, so it doesn't happen so much. If my kids go to the park or sometimes I'll randomly like end up in the house alone because they're all playing in the parking lot. This one's at a hug. This one's there. My boys come home really late at night now Mm -hmm. so it's mostly just the girls um like then i'll maybe story dinner or do something like that um but i don't feel so much pressure like i show what i want to show i don't show just anything i don't want to like if i don't want to show it i don't show it right it's not even like i don't want to show this it's just i only show what i want to show um, and I feel like it's pretty normal because I actually said this yesterday on my Instagram and I, like so many people said like replied, but I thought it was really pasha. Like it is social media. It, it's social. Mm-hmm. So the way you behave socially is how you behave on social media. Like, oh, but that's not the case with so many people. But, so many that's people fine. put like their best foot forward on social media. Uh, that's and, fine. But which, you. But by the way, people put their best foot forward also, socially right, also. Right. Mm. So part of that is okay when it's like to such an extreme, then you're fake even in person with people, right? Right. Like, so, Ki'ilu, there's no screen. Never Forget the screen. Though. Take away the screen. However you behave socially, that's probably how you're going to behave on social media. And if you're hiding behind the screen and behaving in a way you wouldn't behave on social media, then get off. Like, it's not good for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you like you're not actually hiding because the only entity like that cares is Hashem and you can't hide from him right. so your fake name your fake this your mean text message your anonymous post your whatever it is like you're not hiding from anybody i guess sometimes people like put so much effort into like the curation of their life like they're kind of like you know working so hard on putting out just the positive so they're work they're like putting in it's like a photo shoot almost you know you put in so much effort to make you know everyone look beautiful and make everything look perfect and like the second that camera you know flashes all of a sudden like everyone falls you know because like whoa like so I, I don't know I don't know what really you know it's hard it's hard to know because you can assume that about somebody but maybe that person does that in person also, right? right? right. Maybe that person wouldn't leave their house without a full face of makeup. If their, you know, child was in a bad mood, maybe their child would stay home with a babysitter that day. Maybe, I don't know what, you know? Maybe 
they curate their life to everybody on the outside all the time. So curating it on social media is pretty authentic for them, actually, because right. that's, that's, that's what they life. do. But I, I don't know. And if that's not what they do in person and that's what they do on social media, then also I don't know why, you right. know? What what's the end goal? What's the purpose? But that's for them. That's that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to you. It doesn't matter to me. Mm-hmm. Um, what matters to me is what matters to me, right? So for me, when I use social media, I use it like how I you would treat you in a supermarket. So if I was having a really really bad day, maybe I wouldn't go to the supermarket that day. Maybe I had to go to the supermarket anyway. Okay, I don't know why. Usually you could like scrounge up things in the house. Yeah. <laughs> you could find ways to oh, avoid the supermarket. Right. I always really think of the to. beans like, in my pantry. Yeah. Yeah. Like if all else fails, we have beans. <laughs> like borrow a cup of milk yeah, if you really need. Yeah. Like yeah. you could figure out how to avoid it. But okay, but let's say you had to go because it was on your list and you just needed to get it over with. Fine, so you went. And you saw some people that you don't know so well. So you put on a smile, you nod, you're maybe a little bit less friendly than you are other days. So you're not like, oh my gosh, I love your shirt, I love this, wow, you look amazing. But you're like, hi, it's so good to see you. I'm, I'm in a huge rush, okay, see you later. You know, something like that. And then you keep going. Um, or you see somebody that you really don't like and you're really in a bad mood and you don't have the capacity to deal with that today. So you turn around and you go down another aisle, right? Mm-hmm. Or you just don't, you, you nod and you keep going. Or you, I, I don't know, you figure it out. Like, we're pretty socially adept creatures, humans, right? Like, we know how to interact, or most people do. Obviously, this is within the realm of a healthy, normal person. But I just don't think it's so hard. So the way I use social media is the way I use a supermarket. If I wouldn't tell it to you in public or in person, if I saw you, then I wouldn't tell you on social media, you know? I wouldn't come right. on and say I on guess social it's just media, on a large scale. you know what? I had a huge, huge fight with my friend today. And come on social media and talk about that fight. I wouldn't tell you that if I saw you in a supermarket. I think you're really, really nice. We could be best friends. But <laughs> even if we were best friends, I probably wouldn't talk to you about my other friends. Right. That's right. wrong, right. you know? Right. So I so wouldn't you, do that. So you really see the person you're talking to. Which, by the way, I always felt yeah. this is something that you do. Like, I... I you know? I hope so. I just, I don't know. I just treat it like I would yeah. treat any other thing. Like, it doesn't feel, like, so difficult. You're not making a big deal about it. Like, it's not a big deal, basically. Because, because, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. it's. I, I think it's a very positive the, way of looking at it. Like, it's, it. it's a beautiful thing in your life, in a way. No, social media, for me, is really a beautiful thing. Right. Social media is also a very, very dangerous thing, and I think it's really, um, unsafe to deny that I, I don't want my kids to have social media i mean maybe in the future if they had it i would maybe want them to have 45. it in the right way right. <laughs> <laughs> but um social media can be really really unsafe and unhealthy for many many people um you know i think every person would have their own individual reasons for why it's not good for them where it's coming from and whether they need boundaries around it whether they need to not be on it whether they need to not be a content creator or not a consumer you know there's so many variables but for me personally i love to create i love to put it out there my my social media is so cultivated in a way that is so positive for me um i the stories I watch are the people that inspire me, that I learn from, that I really, really like and I look up Who, to. Could yeah. you list some of your favorite creators? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just, is it a secret or you, no, just, you don't know off the top like, of your head? Like, I feel if like she doesn't why? mention someone yeah. and okay. forgets yeah. someone, yeah, like, okay. yeah so I hear because it. Okay, there's so many creators yeah. that I don't know Let's that are so Who's amazing. your least favorite creators? <laughs> who's like really ruining the environment? No, okay. It happens to be, it is such, it, it re- the Jewish content creators the Jewish I was going to say women but there's also a lot of men you know nowadays that are creating content but I'm going to focus on the women you know the Jewish women who are creating content is I think a, such a beautiful first of all outlet I think it is it's such a beautiful space um, we're really really seeing like the the creativity For essentially sure. in, in, in Jewish women it's such a it's you know it's there are so many women that wouldn't have the businesses and that they have today without Instagram like Instagram like I'm saying, I had an Instagram business. Like I, I, I don't really do it anymore. Macarons by Gita. It's great stuff. <laughs> oh wow! I used to yeah. do French macarons, but whatever got busy with life. I, I happen to not really. I'm not on Instagram so much anymore. Very account. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um. But like when I did it, like I remember, it was just it was so amazing to be able to connect to so many people. Like 
on this like on this platform. It's true. Right? It's, 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 it can it's, be it's a incredible. really yeah. It can be a really yeah. good vehicle rap, for connection. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. But you do have to cultivate it. There are times I see some things on here and it brings up a feeling inside of me or a. Uh, Either, yeah, brings up a bad, fe- a negative feeling inside of me, or I see something that I know I shouldn't be seeing, and then I have to shut it down. Like, okay, this is not a person for me to follow. This is not a story for me to watch. This is not something I need to focus on. But you do have to know yourself. You have to be really, really self aware, and you have to s- just turn around, like mm-hmm. walk down the other aisle. Turn, like I love that walk down the other aisle. Um, and I think that it can be a really good place for me. I feel like I've met tens of thousands of women that are so special and so amazing and some look like me some don't you know some grew up in a similar situation some didn't and some don't even speak english some live in way 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 off foreign countries and it's super cool because everybody that i interact with is so positive i think in my whole six years i maybe got three or four really really like difficult to bear messages um, but that's not a lot, so that's yeah. great. No, it's very I mean, it's, little. I don't think it's easy, yeah. but, but that's... No, it's not yeah. a lot. And the truth is, I think the people that sent them... We're going needed, through something difficult. No, right. yeah, they were. They right. were going through something difficult. One person I think I, I actually, like, I offended and I apologized. And the person was wrong and, like, and wrong in how they approached me. Like, it could have been much nicer, but I genuinely felt bad. Um, you know, I'm human also, so if I say something or do something to offend somebody, I hope people can... Um, come and tell me and people actually like I wouldn't even include those in the in the three or four like people like you know I am human you know Um, when someone has a a very large presence online um, you definitely have a a massive presence Uh, definitely people feel kind of sometimes like they know you or they trust you more so Um, do you ever have people that reach out and ask you for advice whether it's maybe a challenge they've gone through whether it's big or small and and generally like how do you say like I I don't know or do you try like if you do give them an answer what what advice do you give them or anyone listening now so sometimes people reach out with things that I really have no experience in and I'll just right away say usually empathize with them usually like if they're reaching out to somebody that they really don't know in person and um, usually it's because even though they know me, it's st- there is still an anonymity mm-hmm. and maybe they're shy or they have nobody to talk to. And it's usually coming from a very broken place. And it's really, really, it's really sad. And so usually I'll, like, I'll, I'll try to dive in for them. I'll, you know, if I can, I'll call somebody that I know and see if there's a resource or something that I can do to help. So that's something that happens quite a few times on the back end, like, in different scenarios with women, with children, um, with like different illnesses, things like that. Um, And sometimes it is a person that went through something similar to what I went through. And sometimes I have the capacity to um, not help because it's like only so much a person can help, but you can um, answer the questions that they want to answer with the limited experience that you have. And sometimes people just need someone to listen. And as much as I can, I do. And then if it gets too much, then I, then I don't. Right. I hear that. That's a very beautiful answer. I want to shift gears to your cookbook and the experience of writing a cookbook was awesome. Was that something that like at a certain point you're like, okay, I want to make a cookbook one day. Yeah, I definitely before Instagram wanted to write a cookbook. Oh, that was really? A dream. Yeah. Oh. But then I didn't want to write a cookbook at all. Really? Why? Because I like, didn't why? understand why anybody would want a cookbook. Like I'm posting all. all the recipes on Instagram. For why free. do you want a cookbook? Oh, because there's something about holding that book in your hand. So now get it. I remember when I got my peas, love and carrots. <laughs> yeah, you say that. My brother right? yeah. bought it for me as oh a gift. So God. excited! So sweet! So excited! Yeah, and like I remember opening it up and I'm like, oh my gosh, she put so many words in here. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> you know so what? Much to I, read. So I didn't know that. I didn't know because I really can't follow recipes. You cannot <laughs> oh, follow wow, a recipe. A um, so I didn't understand like the feeling of holding a cookbook and not having to like look through your phone or look through Google. Like if I ever want inspiration for a recipe or I want to learn something, like I'm so like really, really a food nerd. Like I will research it 
so much. I'll read a million recipes. I'll read like the theories behind why the ingredients work together and things. The food and lab is a great I book. love you the food lab, of course. I, yes. Okay. <laughs> and I um, you know, like I'll do that. So I'm like, why would anybody want one book? Like I want hmm. all of it. I want all the information. Because not everyone is Danielle Reynolds. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know. And then, you know, whatever. It came at the right time, the opportunity I really wanted. Like, I didn't want, but I needed to be distracted. I needed something really concrete to focus on. Not just, like, Instagram posting a recipe every night. I needed, like, a project, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And it was a really good project because it's really big. <laughs> and it takes mm-hmm. a lot of time and effort. And I loved it. Loved it. Every part. Developing the recipes. I loved the writing, I loved the editing, I loved being in the studio, taking the pictures, cooking the food, every, every part of it I loved. The only part I really didn't love was when the book came out, like the promoting, like that was like very not not for me. Yeah, Um, that was really, really hard for me. Was there any way of doing, not having to do it? Yeah, Hashem literally took care of me. I feel like the book promoted itself. Why, how, what? Did not, the book like, went to print. In well, first March. of all, you, you teamed up with Archville, right? Like yeah. they're a behemoth in the right print world. Yeah, but there's still like expectations, of, right? Because you have a big influence, like the uh, book, ins- Instagram. The book phone. went to print in March 2020, and then it kept shutting down all the factories because. Oh wow! So oh. it actually went to print like six or seven times before it finally got printed in six or seven. Diff- it was the seventh factory that finally, um, Art School found a factory. Now Art School has a whole facility right, Jersey, they can right, print themselves, but then they didn't. The factory only opened after, uh. and they they found like a factory in South America that could print the books, and like the colors were different whatever it was crazy <laughs> the book was supposed to come like out the in, blue in the right <laughs> the book was supposed to come out in may instead it was coming out it literally landed from the factory like bays of and i was like no like <laughs> no like I, you can't tell this do not give it to a single store like it can't like there's nothing good can come <laughs> of a start in av yeah like giving out a book like in the nine days like it's only nine days our right. day is tish right. above right. 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 no way no way and it was like a nidcha that year so oh, like okay. really ten days <laughs> oh, like extra time um, in the end the truth is Amazon um the pre-orders went out during the nine days and it was really hard. Like I didn't look at the tags. I didn't look at anything. I just like, and I didn't say a word on Instagram. I just like, that was really, really hard. But Hashem also helped me because then the book came out and it was Corona and I couldn't travel anywhere and I couldn't do any like demos or things, which is, yeah, which is something I love. But when it came to with the book, I felt very uncomfortable with it. Like, cause why? Cause it was like a product and like you're selling it and there's money. I don't know. It was like self promoting. It was really self promoting. And I really, I really didn't like it. Even though I want everybody to have the book. I worked so hard. I just don't (laughs) want to like keep telling you to buy the book right, like, right. Just buy the book. guys the buy the book <laughs> yes yeah, yeah we will be your promoters um, so, it's still for sale please we'll go buy it it's still great are we there love any it. future cookbooks no no we're done. so i i loved it i loved every part of it but um that's it like i want to try something else if i didn't have other things that i wanted to do or feel so energized to keep building on what like and really i feel like we because like none of this could have happened alone. Like I, I couldn't do this without right. the whole community right. on Instagram that we built. Then I would say, okay, fine, write another book. But for me, like there's so much creativity out there, and there's so many platforms and so many ways to express yourself. Like I don't, I don't want to give two years to another book. I want to do something wow. else. Is there, yeah. is there a certain type of project that you would right, do? Like, would you, so, do, like, would you do a work? Would you do a cooking show, or is that like too? Well, 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 we've done does, cooking yeah. shows. No, but I'm saying like. For for uh, kosher dot com, right? Yeah, but like no, is, for other 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 places. Also, yeah, like yeah. is there? Is a, I'm saying, is there a project that you're like thinking of? So we're actually yeah. So this okay. is Next. so we didn't really announce it yet, but we um actually rented uh like studio space in Yerushalayim. And we're building out like a proper cooking studio for photography and video with cool. like two separate wow. kitchens, and it's gonna be pretty amazing. And I'm really, really, really excited about that. So, like, just to put out better food content. um, It's actually, like, my kitchen is really difficult to film in because, like, the stove is, like, right next to the wall and under a window. Are you, like, leaning against the, like, the the wall to, like, get the picture? I thought, like, take my pictures in my living room. Like, I would pretend that, remember that? I used to, like, set up, like, my, you know, a fake, like, a fake tile to make it look like I have marble counters. This studio is going to be, like, airy and good lighting and just look more... 
Right. Prof- just easier to take yeah. good pictures. Yeah, just easier to take pictures, easier to produce content. Also, because girls come home so early here, like, it is very hard to, like, work Mm -hmm. in my house now because it's very noisy and there's a lot going Mm on. So you're like officially not going to be a (laughs) stay-at-home Oh. (laughs) No, I think still just um, just it will make it easier I think for my family and for me. Like if I could leave the house in the morning and go work and still be home when they come home but my kitchen not be like a complete disaster. Right. You know, and instead of making one recipe have like somebody else filming so that it's like two or three recipes um, and then not have to do with that for the next two days. So like I'm more free, just like a better that's such an use amazing of my time. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. That's um, incredible. So like producing better content in a way that's also better for my family. That's so smart. It's amazing. You, you, you probably when you started this, of course, obviously when you started this, you couldn't even imagine like no for sure not for sure not it's wild for sure not the truth is like there have been a lot of opportunities recently to do like things like that like cooking shows and things but it's out of the house and it's very far from your shine Mm -hmm. and it would mean leaving my kids once a week from eight in the morning until eight at night and I don't want that it really for me like is just not the icker it's not um it's not my goal. Right. You're, you're more of a mom at the end of the day than a food blogger. No, I feel like I'm only. I'm you're only. only. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. I like that. Like, I like that. Like, um, I don't know. So it was really important also that there were two kitchens so at least I could bring home dinner. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's smart. Wait, what do you mean? Like, keep it kosher. Um, because of all the props are trafe and the kitchen is trafe. Like, it's hard when you're producing content so fast right. to keep one so kitchen wait, kosher. So, so one's going to be dairy and one's going to be meat. Okay. No power of one? Okay. okay. And, <laughs> so you're now, getting, now yeah, getting yeah. greedy, trying to feel like... That's really cool. That's yeah. really cool. So you can actually bring home whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, That's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to ask fun fun questions at the end. I think okay. they're fun. Uh, do you have a particular mitzvah that you relate to more than others? A favorite mitzvah? I think that's a really good question. Okay. I happen to not like the question, but I like the answers. It is a really good question. It's a hard question. It's so hard. I feel like you always learn about... Kids Olim and like really holy people that they were very passionate about certain mitzvahs or just anyone like it, it kind of taps you into like oh they're into davening and like it just helps also it could be something that you do every day that you don't even think is right. really a mitzvah but it is you know yeah um, I do really like davening I am okay. definitely a davener um, but I always was like since I was little um, I, I really love shul like that, it was hard for me when I was first married, when I had first had little kids, and now I go, like I get a babysitter and I go, I know that's not like so. Why do you like shul so much? I just like it. I like to be in shul. I like to dive and I like to. It like, it's very much. It, it is much more easy to have kavana in a shul than for in sure. your living room with people yes, all around you. Yes, screaming. Um, but I feel like if I could get a babysitter to go to dinner, if it's possible, if I could get a babysitter to go to shul on Rosh in the morning, then. Good. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I would say, I don't know. I have like things like I really like Bain Adam Lechaver was really, really important to me. I feel like I see with my kids, like it's like, it, it, I don't think halacha should ever come at the expense of other people. Meaning, okay. Yeah. Like, like I that's do, a real concern. not obviously eating not kosher or being Mikhail Shabbos right. or anything like that but you know um, it's like little things that you could see in the park with your kids and they're like it, I, you really need like a specific example you know what I'm saying like um, I'll give you an example yeah. I, my Rabbi Stark said this example and I thought it was great he was once in Six Flags and they were online and someone in front of him they were a Jewish family like right before their turn, like seven of their kids came back on the line. And he said, I could tell you every svar of like, well, Kadima, they were there first, right. they were holding the spot on line. And all the non-Jews around them were like, what in the world? Come on, like they didn't wait on the line. They, they went to play for their, right. and that was a great example of like, halachically, technically, they're allowed to do that. But like, Derek Harris, like, is that the right thing? Is that, right. like, you're making, every, good, right. you're making everyone like example, around you go yeah. like, come on, like, that's just not, that how exactly. things should be done. Just right. menschlich kai right. Right. is really, really, really important to me. And I, like, don't want it to get lost. And, you know, my boys go to, like, really, like, your Shalmi 
haters and and e like even here everywhere I see like sometimes like the more insulated you get in a from community sometimes like those things do get lost right, for some reason I don't know why and like it's so so important to me to hold on to and to maintain that not at the expense of being Mahmir but alongside of being Mahmir is also being really really diligent in your um in your dark of of everybody all around you and um that's something I really care a lot about. That's a really beautiful yeah. answer. What's the worst advice you've ever received, and what's the best it's oh, advice you've ever worst received? Worst advice like happens. Fire. <laughs> worst advice happens daily. I don't even know really? what it was. Any advice that was like so aggressive that I didn't feel in my like gut was good for me, and I did it anyways, was the worst advice. Like that's it. Hmm. Like. Even when I started my Instagram, like there were things people told me to do and I listened and it never, ever worked. Hmm. But if they told me to do something and I felt good about it and then I did it, it worked. It was great. So I really think the best advice is advice that you can, that resonates with mm -hmm. you. Follow your gut. Yeah. And bad advice is advice that you listen to even though your gut is saying no. Like I, I really feel like we all just have this like ability to know you just have to really be opened right so like an internal radar yeah so even the good advice you have to open your mind and you have to think like oh is there something constructive here and sometimes there is and then when you listen to it it works out you know so there is no like best advice it's just like best advice is no. follow your gut almost oh, like yeah it's a, be open to listening and if it's right for you great if not bye I love yeah. that. Okay, Gita, is there any? Uh, I know there's probably a thousand more questions you have. I know. I'm like thinking in my. How do you do this? Like when you think, I'm thinking in my mind all of the things that like I didn't get to bring no, up. No, it's, 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 it's there's always uh, there's always more. There's always remorse after. Like oh, I should have asked that. I, I should have said like, that. I wanted to talk about all the different cuisines that you cook. The fact that you have such a like. Well, wide finish, finish array up with one question. Of, like, is this your last question you want to ask? Um, is it is it a question or is it more of just like how did you get into cooking so many different? Cuisines, so like you, my you have everything. Right. Yeah. Like what's your My mother's Moroccan, so okay. we grew up eating a lot I of wanted to ask Sephardi about the food. Also. <laughs> so we grew up eating a lot of that. She was okay. born in Morocco. And um, my father's Ashkenaz, super duper. His father's a survivor and his mother is from the Bronx. <laughs> Oh my and gosh. Okay. Um, so we grew up with pretty diverse cuisine in the house, but also like my parents are foodies. So ah. yeah, okay. So you inherited the foodiness. Yeah, yeah. Even my grandparents are foodies. Oh wow! Like really? Yeah. My father always tells story that his, it's just so cute. His parents, when they were first married, it was like whatever, uh, you know, a long time ago. And his mother was from the Bronx, his father was a survivor, and once in a while, they would go on a date from, like, they were already married from the Bronx. It would take them, like, two hours, because they would have to take trains and buses, whatever, to go somewhere in Manhattan to get this specific sandwich that my <laughs> grandmother really liked. <laughs> like, it was I, like, I want the sandwich. I know, like, it was like a peppers, like, steak and pepper or something sandwich that she really, really liked. And I always listen to that story, and I'm like, I don't totally hear that <laughs> right like i, I relate yeah. like we are related you're your parents right? um so i don't so know my home. mother yeah and my food mother home. would like best homes like, like if my father homes. like saw something on tv she would recreate it he was like oh that looks really good she would find a way to recreate it would you say your mom is like your biggest like um, yeah she's your an amazing cook she's yeah, your, her, your, yeah her she started and you on my this journey for sure they're amazing amazing I mean, moroccans are really good cooks. oh my gosh like they, it's it's no, that's Yemenite. I'm thinking about Yemenite talent right now. Yemenite food is really good. Yemenite food happens is delicious. to be delicious. Like with like a lamb in it, and it, like, like that I think lamb. types of foods are good. It's just like a different vibe and different style and different mood. It's, it's most types. No, yeah. oh, you have. I mean, you're not going to say which one you don't like. Yaakov is not a foodie. I'm not a foodie. Right. Gita is a foodie, but that I have the Balances advantage of like really well. Gita, okay. make whatever you want. Like I'll be happy no, with that. That's right. amazing. My husband's favorite food is. Wacky Mac. There you go. Okay. Um, there literally you go. Not Jacob gonna... will sneak boxes of it into the house. Also, he doesn't like when I make the Wacky Mac. It's like That's too funny. creamy or something. It has to uh. be like dry. I don't <laughs> even know. Oh, that is so funny. <laughs> no, hello. Two tablespoons of butter, fourth a cup of milk. That's the best way. <laughs> 
I don't even know. I like I, I don't. He, I can't get near it. It has to be his way. <laughs> so, and I have I have a last question that I want to ask you. Is yeah. there anything else you want to get in? I, I know. Typically, I know, Gita, I, I when I'm like doing these interviews, I'm like, okay, Gita's at home. Like we have a babysitter. We have to get back. It's this like unique okay, uh, okay. experience. What yeah. are you talking about? You have a babysitter. You have to go right. out for dinner. Right. Okay. Oh my God, Oh, yeah. Should yeah. I ask Christine next hour? Uh, <laughs> Could you cook us dinner? Do it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Keep that. She has to go. This is why we brought you This is why we brought you We didn't really care about anything I else. Feel like the kitchen like, is set up. You should cook me dinner. Right. Do you want like chemicals? Yes. Yes. I want all I want all of the I want everything. All of the chemistry behind it. We'll talk. Okay. <laughs> so my last question is this. Uh is there a particular story that either happened in your life or that you've heard from in a speech or something that inspires you or has inspired you a specific story yeah people love i whenever i do these whenever i listen to okay, podcasts, i love stories okay. okay so there's this book it's called hasidish tales it's like a gray book and i bought it when i was in seminary before we went to poland um, because it's divided up by the hasidish arabas by the towns like cool okay I don't remember if it was the Kotzka Rebbe or Reb Levi Yitzchak. I actually reread it recently, but it's an amazing, amazing story. And I reread it to my kids on a Friday night, like a few weeks ago. So I should remember, but I have a really bad memory. <laughs> um, basically, this man is listening to the Rebbe give a drasha all about speaking words of MS. Like, really, every single word out of your mouth has to be 100% ms sick. but MS doesn't just mean MS, it means the MS la miso, so right, so when Aaron would go to one person and say he feels bad, like, that was the MS la miso mm -hmm. because it was, you know, coming from deep within them, it wasn't a lie. And um, obviously, you have to like learn all the halachas about MS. I'm right, not yeah, here to teach you that. I don't know. There's much, <laughs> much more knowledgeable people. And um, this man took it really seriously because the Kutzke Rebbe said that I think it was that if you speak words of MS, real, real MS, for an entire day, you will go straight to Olam Haba to the Kisei Kavod. And that will be your makom. And it's a huge, huge, huge schuss to be able to do an entire day where every word out of your mouth is MS. Okay. So this guy is like, okay, I'm in. I could do this. I, I got this. I got this. He goes back to his house, which is like a little shack. And he has a wife and children. And the next day he wakes up really, really early. He goes to Nate's and he comes home. He goes into his room and he locks the door and he is in the room all day. His wife's knocking on the door, kids are knocking on the door, not saying a word. He is learning, learning the whole day. Um, he in the he said, Mincha biachidas, like he really was just, kept his mouth shut, did not say a word the entire day. All of a sudden, it's getting dark and it's almost, almost matter of time. And something is happening outside. I don't remember the exact details of the story. And a neighbor comes and he needs to borrow an ax. And they're like knocking on the door. And now his wife's getting really nervous. Like she hasn't heard from him. He's not responding. Like in the beginning, she heard him learning a little bit, but now she can't hear him. And the kids are getting nervous. And he locks himself in the closet in his room and really, really locks it down. And they come into the bedroom and they see he's in the closet. And he's like, that's it. I'm, I'm almost there. I am literally almost, almost there. And the neighbor's like banging on the closet door. I just need an axe. I just need an axe. Finally, he screams out. He's like, there's no axe. I don't have an axe. And the neighbor leaves. Like, he's sitting on the floor of his tiny closet. Like, oh, right? I'm saying, think about this, like, Eastern Europe. His closet was probably, like, the size of, you right. know, <laughs> a locker. And finally, the neighbor leaves. He comes out of the closet. He sees it's really, really dark. He davens Marv, and he is so, so, so happy. He did it the whole day. He did not say a single word word of Shakar, every word out of his mouth is MS, and he goes to put on his shoes or whatever, say Marv, and he sees an axe on the floor of the closet. Oh my god. I know. I know, it's a crazy story. Oh, that's the end of the story? No. Okay. Yeah. And so he goes oh back gosh. to the Rebbe, and he tells the Rebbe, like, and he's crying. I mean, he, he did this for a whole day. Like, he really was invested, and it was Lishma. Like, mm -hmm. he wasn't doing this stam to be, like, famous Breaking or for Guinness anything. Record. He was doing this because he wanted to be near Hashem. Like, his intentions were very, very noble. And the Rebbe is obviously feels very, very bad for him and says... 
you miss the point. The point is not to lock yourself in a closet. The point is not to insulate yourself from the entire world. The point is to live your life around in this world, around people, and still be an amestic person. There's no schar for locking yourself in a closet, away from people, away from any opportunities to do other mitzvahs, away from any other opportunities to connect and to serve Hashem, just so that you 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 reach the kisei akavu. That's that's not what it's about. And I think it's such such an amazing important lesson because we can't lock ourselves away. We have to live in this world. And it is hard and it is challenging. And I don't think any I don't think Hashem is denying that. And I don't think Hashem expects perfection. I don't think Hashem expects us a hundred percent of the day that every I mean, I hope every word is MS dick that comes out of our mouth, right? But like I don't know, when I say to my kids I'll be there in two minutes and I know I'm definitely not gonna be there in two <laughs> minutes. Like <laughs> that's not so MS dick. Like, okay, I could probably work on that, but I'm saying like we have to live in this world and our goal is to work on ourselves in this world. And I just think it's a great story. And I it always sticks out in my mind. That is great. Well yeah, I love that. Gita Langer, Mrs. Danielle Renoff. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank for you for coming having in. me. Yeah, Thank this you. is so much fun. It's really nice yeah. to meet you. Thank you so much for watching or listening to this episode. And if it's your first episode and you got to this point, please go listen to the other episodes of Inspiration for the Nation. I think you will enjoy. And if you really like this so much, you think this episode could be mechazik, a friend, uh, go and share it. I, it means the world to me. Obviously, go rate it on Spotify and Apple. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment. Leave anything that lets me know that you watched it. Uh, and and, and I... I yeah, they, thank you, Mrs. Peas, Love, and Carrots for coming in and doing this. And also, thanks to my wife for, for obviously, you know, doing this episode. She's a natural. I think she could totally take me over. I don't need to do this anymore. She's she's the one. She's the one. But I also want to, you know, show my cards to to her for, for truly, you know, believing in me and, you know, helping me really do this there's obviously so many people to think like my parents my brothers my my friends you, you know you all know who you are but particularly i want to thank my wife for for uh being on this mission with me you don't really see or hear besides this episode but but um this show is 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 hers just as much as it is mine and i want to thank her for that and I want you to go check out the Good Faith Effort podcast. Like mentioned in the show notes, check it out. Rivari's a great guy. Peruse through. You will find an episode that really makes you go like, wait, that's actually really interesting. So check them out. And until next time, well, it's going to be in like three days from now, four days. You're going to have another episode in the middle of the week. But until next time, keep on being inspirational. Living L'chaim.